I'm Morgan Jaremus with RT Book Reviews, and I'm joined today by historical author Sarah McClain. Hi. Hi. Thanks for having me. And you have a book coming out today. I do. This is a very, very, very special book for me because it was actually dedicated to me. Yeah. It was. It was. Girls who wear glasses. Yeah. I'm a girl who wears glasses. No, I, I opened up the, the flat set and I and I read that and I was like, that's so cool because you don't really get that very often in a historical romance novel. Uh, a, a woman who is maybe, um, you know, respected for her intelligence because a lot of times it's about the balls and the dresses and this is all about women who wear glasses. <laughs> yes. It's about, the heroine of this book is quite odd um and that's not why she wears glasses she wears glasses because she's blind as a bat but the um <laughs> she's also quite odd and I wanted to um I was really interested in the fact that oftentimes especially in novels we have heroines who are super smart as my heroine is um and wear glasses because obviously that's the, if you're smart then you must wear glasses right um but I was really, but we often approach um, historical romances, especially approach um, smart women with a modern sensibility of, oh, but isn't it great that they're so smart? And um, I really wanted to write a character who was judged for it. And she's, I think I have the cover here. Here we go. One good Earl deserves a lover. Right. And gorgeous cover, by the way. You <sighs> see her glasses right here. I, I love it. couldn't, when I asked, uh, you know, about eight months before a book comes out, they they send you an email and they say, so what's this book about? In my case, it's, you know, what is it? Tell us what the heroes or the hero looks like. Tell us what the heroine looks like. Is there anything specific you want in the cover? And I said, I really would like for her to have spectacles because they're a huge part of her identity. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I was really worried that I wouldn't get them because, you know, glasses don't necessarily sell and marketing is, is marketing. Mm -hmm. And I was so excited. I really, I mean, the cover gods bless me. <laughs> Um, always. I've never had a cover I don't like, but this one's particularly gorgeous. Okay. So you have Pippa, and she is very intelligent to the point of she actually has problems communicating with other people to mm -hmm. a certain point because when she gets excited or she starts to go on about something that she knows about, she kind of dives in and kind of forgets those around her and goes mm -hmm. in her own little world, and it's it's a pretty big problem for her. Her brain works in a very different way than most people's. Her brain actually works in a very different way than my brain does, mm -hmm. and so it was um, it was really interesting learning to write her. This book was a slow beginning for me because she was such a challenge for me because she says crazy things all the time, and her she identifies she'll be in a situation and suddenly um you know a, a pendulum will distract her or an abacus will distract her or you know a star will distract her and she'll suddenly be talking about something else entirely and the rest of the scene just sort of falls away <laughs> and, and it, i know like a horticulture she'll start naming <laughs> bones in your hand yeah and she's, <laughs> yeah, she's very very strange mm -hmm. and so and i actually worry I worried, and you know, it comes out today, so I, I worry, <laughs> present tense, that maybe she's too strange, but she is who she is, and, and strange deserves love too, so. Well, you say that you kind of had a slow start getting into the book, but your book, there's no slow start at all, because at the very, very beginning, she is in what's essentially the hero's bedchamber, and she asks him to ruin her. Mm-hmm, yes. She, um, she, Pippa, if, for those of you who've read um, A Rogue by Any Other Name, which is the first book in my Rules of Scoundrels series, um, Pippa is the sister, the odd youngest sister of the heroine of, of Rogue, and um, she's set to be married at the end of um, A Rogue by Any Other Name, and at the beginning, and at the middle, of, and at the end of, <laughs> of um, One this Good Earl Deserves a Lover. pretty much think right. it's going to happen. I mean, she's, right totally set to be married and she's fine with that and mm -hmm. her, her husband is a nice guy mm -hmm. a perfectly ordinary nice guy future husband um but she's um like any good scientist she's done her research and she has read the marriage ceremony and um, the marriage ceremony has some very strange uh has some strange language in it that she doesn't exactly understand especially around the intimate acts of of marriage mm -hmm. and it, it really got me thinking because i never really thought about it like this but it really was kind of unfair at this time when when like the marital bed wasn't necessarily talked about in open company mm -hmm. um and you could maybe a sister or a mother but if they weren't forthcoming 
these women would go into marriage with knowing nothing of what to expect. Right. And I assume that they knew something, but um, Pippa herself, because she's a scientist, has seen animals do it. And it perplexes her. (laughs) As it would. And so she goes to the only person who she can think of who who is safe enough for her to ask questions, um, but not close enough that she's going to embarrass herself. Um, And she asks, she says straight up, I need to know about how humans do this because I know how bulls do it, and is it the same? Right, and Cross, (laughs) our hero... Our he poor is, hero. He is, to say shocked would be like, I, I was surprised he just didn't like, you know, like fall down because it's like, you know, women of breeding did not do no. this. No. You know, and, and he runs a gaming hell and he's around some pretty unsavory characters some mm-hmm. of the time. So he's he's used to hearing the odd comment now and then, but coming from a lady, he doesn't really know how to take all of this. And especially one that he knows through association with one of his partners. Right. That she is now the sister-in-law of one of his partners, so he has to tread extra carefully because he doesn't want to mess up that relationship. Mm-hmm. So he's he's kind of at, at he doesn't know what to do. He's terrified. Yeah, um, especially when he starts actually noticing her as yeah, a woman. Yeah, I mean, at first he's scientific too, so at first he sort of sees her as he sees her in pieces, the way she sees everything. Um, but she's scary because she represents, you know, not only if you know, his partner finds out that they've made this deal um, or that she's doing this thing with him, he could, you know, lose a, ser- a friendship that he values very much and a, and a business relationship that he values very much, but also because she threatens every – he stays away from women in general mm-hmm. um, for lots of reasons. He's Especially very marriageable ones. He doesn't yeah, – that's not, not something that he ever wants to get involved right. in. Right, like there are prostitutes in the club who he's you know, interacts with, but there's – He's decidedly aware of his need to steer clear of any serious woman. Mm -hmm. Um, And Pippa won't be steered clear of. No, she's a force. (laughs) She's a total force. I have a little bit of a girl crush on this this character because she is just, she is so strong and she's so smart. And it's almost like you have this ability to write these characters. You just want to follow them around to see what they're going to say next. Yeah. Like, do you, in your head, do you kind of go through through a character's day just to find out what their day-to-day lives would be like? Pippa and Cross are no doubt my, I mean, I know that every, I know that I'm, you know, you're not supposed to pick, you're not supposed to talk about your favorite book, but this is probably my favorite book. It's certainly the book I, the, they are definitely my favorite couple of all the books that I've written. Um, and she, and they, there are so many pages on the floor of my office that didn't make it into this book because they would literally get into a room together and just talk for <laughs> 25 pages. You know? <laughs> but I love that. I would, I would like, love it. You know, <laughs> typing furiously and laughing. And then, <laughs> and then I would deliver the manuscript to my editor and she would circle whole sections and say, why is this here? And she's totally right. But it was there because they just liked each other. Um, yes. And that, and, and, and we like them, yeah. and, and it, it's, they're, they're funny, and they're smart, so, so there's this clever banter happening all the time, and I, I mean, I was flipping through so fast, it, I actually read this book probably in record time, because it just, it flows so well, and you're Thank just, you. you're like, what's the next zinger, what's the next, but none of it is rude, none of it is, is mean-spirited, it's all, they're, they're nice, genuine people, who enjoy each other's company, and they spend a lot of time together, especially for somebody, she's engaged to somebody else, they yeah. really do find a way to, to really spend some time together, which I love, because they, they get to know each other. Yeah, I mean, they they fall in love in a way that, you know, a, a lot of times as a writer, you write a book, um, and you sort of orchestrate the love story in a way. You're, you sort of, when you um, outline the book, you, you say, okay, and then they're going to have this scene, and in this scene, this thing is going to happen, and it will move the reader forward this amount, and so it'll become more believable that these two characters are falling in love. Mm-hmm. For me, um, Pippa and Cross, they did it themselves. I mean, it was a really, because they're such powerful characters, singularly and together, um, well, let's let's talk about Cross a little bit. He's a ginger, which I thought was a, that's a bold ginger. choice. He's yeah. got he's got the red in his hair, which he does. You don't get a lot of historical characters like that. No. Well, I was told when I started writing the series, and I mean, Cross has been like a tall ginger from the beginning. Mm-hmm. 
Um, and I remember having a conversation with another author and uh, who's been writing a lot longer than I have and, and her saying, you know, redheads don't, you won't get a redhead on the cover. Redheads aren't, aren't popular. And I thought, well, I mean, he's a redhead. So if it's not popular, it's not popular already. I mean, this book is crazy. So, I mean, if his hair color is going to be the deal breaker, then <laughs> I'm just in. I'm in. Um, and it was actually really interesting because he's been a ginger forever. And then um, people ask me a lot about whether, um, because her name is Pippa and he's a redhead, is this a royal wedding, like a Prince Harry, Pippa Middleton kind of thing. And um, it is not, it was not intended to be, although he is the second son of, you know, a, a, I like didn't there are all think sorts of little it. things that sort of relate, but, mm-hmm. um, but I really, uh, no, he's a ginger because honestly, he, it just, it just worked and I like the idea of it and I have sort of a little crush on Tim Minchin, the comedian who's also right, a ginger. Right. So sometimes, you know. <laughs> well, and I liked how it was, it was different. It was a little bit different. Not enough to be like, oh my God, but enough right. to be like, he's, there's something about him that makes you want to take a second look. Yeah. Well, and he's an accountant. Like he's yeah. like the money guy. He's a mathematician. So there's he really is, yeah. nothing about him at first glance where, I mean, I kind of wanted him to be a hero who was maybe a little off. Like she, she wouldn't. I didn't want to write the Wallflower Rake book again. I wanted to write two people who were different and found love. And he's different. I agree. He is different, but in a great way, especially in the way that he is so accepting of her and her quirks. Because he is somebody that feels, you know, he's, he's gone through a lot in his life. Um, I won't get in entirely into it, but just let's say some major family issues, some major family issues in his past. Well, we can get into the the key. Well, thing. okay, okay. Well, the key thing is is his brother died, and he felt like he should have died in his stead. Right. His and brother was yeah. in a carriage that he should have been in. And and his entire family pretty much blamed him for it. They, his family pretty much fell apart after that. And and he has been in blame for it, blamed himself for it, mm-hmm. um, and it's pretty much so. So his idea of like I've done so much wrong, I can't judge anyone else. Mm-hmm. So when this very odd woman shows up, right. it's almost like he can't. He's like, I'm not going to judge you because you know, look right. at my past, and you can kind of be whoever you want to be. Right. And she and but at the same time, he's never met anybody like her. I mean, there are, there aren't people like her usually. So <laughs> I mean. She all she has other weird quirks like she only tells the truth. So even when it is the most painful yeah. thing ever, she won't lie. She will not lie. And he's just, this just I mean he makes his living lying. And I mm-hmm. always say to I mean I've said it to you I'm sure sitting in this chair I, I mean all my heroes lie. So <laughs> writing a heroine who t- never lies um, is it just and throwing her, her in with them is is always an interesting. I have to ask you, if you took Pippa and you put her today, because where there is not the same restrictions on women and education and things, what do you think she would be doing today? Because I know what she's working on is uh, some botany, some horticulture, and right. doing some really groundbreaking things mm-hmm. um, in, in her time, which is not necessarily a woman's pursuit, be, but because it dealt with flowers and things, it was kind of mm-hmm. more accepted. But in today's world where she could have had any education she wanted, mm-hmm. with her genius mind, what would you see her doing? Oh, well, you know, she'd still be totally socially awkward. And, um, I mean, she'd probably be like a coder or something. You know, she'd she'd work for some, you know, tech company or, you know, <laughs> and she'd write software. And she'd be like the girl who sits in the corner and drinks like two liters of Fanta every day <laughs> and, you know, never really comes out of her cube because mm-hmm. coming out of her cube is is scary. And I think Pippa, as much as she's curious and interested in the world, she's terrified of the confusion of emotion and the confusion of – she doesn't understand emotion at all. And when she has emotional moments where she, you know, feels breathless when she sees him, she perceives it as – like there's something like I can't breathe. I must be dying, right? I mean, <laughs> I'm she, sick. Oh God! <laughs> there's something wrong with me. Um, which was really fun to write that stuff too, because I, actually it just made me like I remember watching at some point while I was reading while I was writing the book. I was wa- I watched like Steel Magnolias and I was crying and I was thinking, and I in the middle of feeling like that desperate sadness that I feel every time I watch that movie, I was like, wait, what does this feel like? You know, physically, how does this feel? 
Mm-hmm. And I'd never thought about that before. Um, but it helps because it ended up being in the book, you know, what it feels like to be just deeply sad. Or and there are there, there are some deeply sad moments, but there's also there's so much joy in all of your writing in all of your books. Um, it they never fail to absolutely make you so lighthearted. Like I was literally driving to this interview today in the car, and I was humming to myself <laughs> because I had reread some of the portions of the book, oh, and nice. it just it my my whole day just like lifted, and I just because there's just it's so much fun, and like I said, there's just so much joy in your writing. Well, I'm. Thank you. That means a lot to hear. I, I'm glad that you feel that way. I like for you to feel that way. <laughs> well, I know One Good Earl Deserves a Lover is out today. Is yes. it too soon to ask about the next no, book? No, not, it's not at too all. soon. The, Tell us. The next book, which is out this fall, um, is called No Good Duke Goes Unpunished. And it is Temple's story, for those of you who've been following. Um, Temple is the third of four owners of the Fallen Angel, which is the game in hell that I write about in uh, the 1830s. Um, he is the head of security. He is a bare knuckle boxer, and um, what I can and he is presumed to be a murderer. Everyone thinks that he's a murderer, and and that is actually in this book brought up. Uh, the things that you just said are brought up yes. that that he. Um, you know, if anything happens security wise at the club, he puts people down. Like yeah, he doesn't Temple's hesitate. He he does his job, and and also he's he's very um, he's actually called a murderer to his face, or he mentions it, mm-hmm. and it's very it's very out in the open. This is not something hidden yeah. in his past. This is something that takes a lot of his present. Yes, you know what what's going he's, on right now with him. Yeah, he's uh, his nickname is the Killer Duke. Um, he and the and all of London knows that he has killed somebody. Um, but there's no proof, no physical proof. The body was never found. And so um, he is free is as much as you can be with everyone knowing that there was a time that you killed someone. Is there ever a time where the heroine is maybe scared of this fighter, possibly murder? Um, well, actually, no, because the heroine is the person who he was presumed to have killed. So... And I think we will, we will leave it at that. <laughs> so yeah, uh, she, yeah, she's not afraid of him because she, she, she knows, knows the truth, which is he didn't kill anybody because she's very much alive. Excellent. So everyone has to go out for the Earl, and and you need you need to pick up this one because honestly, so much fun, such a great couple. And get ready for the next one in the series. Thank you so much for talking with me today. Thanks for having me. Thanks, everyone.